Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to look at unitary operators and time evolution. So this is kind of a new topic. I say kind of because these unitary operators have been lurking around in things that we did in the last chapter and now we're going to pull it out make it more explicit. So first of all, what's a unitary operator? A unitary operator is an operator whose inverse is its adjoint. And you can see that right here. Now one of the nice properties of unitary operators is that they preserve the inner product. And this is what this means. Suppose I take ket psi, ket phi, and act on each of them with a unitary operator and take their inner product. And I use the old notation for inner product here. But now going over to Dirac notation, remember I can take the u on the left over to the right, immediately to the left of the other u, but I pick up an adjoint sign in the process. Or it turns into the adjoint in the process for that to be an equality. But u dagger u is identity, and this is what we get. So this is what it means for the inner product to be preserved by unitary operators. OK, now the significance of unitary operators in quantum mechanics is that they govern the time evolution of the wave function in Schrodinger's equation. And we're going to show what that means right now. So first of all, we're going to define this unitary operator. For, why is it unitary? OK, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. But what this operator is, is the exponential of minus i t h Hamiltonian divided by h bar. h is self a joint. It's possible to prove that this is unitary in the sense of the definition above. But I'm going to leave that for the moment and ask, what does the uh, exponential mean? Whenever you get have an exponential of something other than a number, you still understand it in terms of the exponential series. So one can show that if, if the operator is bounded, that which will be true for finite dimensions, this series converges in a nice sense. I'm not going to go into that detail and prove that here. I just want to use um, this operator. And mostly when we say use it, we're going to use it in the exponential series term by term. OK. So I want to show that time evolution of the state vector is governed by this u of t that I just wrote down. So we take an initial state in the Hilbert space. It's constant in time. Act on it with u of t. And that gives us a time-dependent state vector. And what we want to prove is that time-dependent state vector satisfies the Schrodinger equation. So we need to substitute it into the equation and see what we see that it's satisfied. First, we need a preliminary calculation. We need to differentiate with respect to time u of t. And we do that by differentiating the series term by term. Generally, that's something you need to do with caution. But these exponential series converge really nicely because of this u in factorial term in the denominator. But we differentiate the series. And the time dependence comes out here. The n equals 0 term is the only is, is constant. We pull that out. It doesn't depend on time. That's what I mean by constant. And what we see we are left with, n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1 in the exponent, n minus 1 in the denominator for the factorial. We can re-index, and we get exactly the same as the exponential for this sum, but it's multiplied by minus i Hamiltonian divided by h bar. 
and this is what we get. Okay, now back to the Schrodinger equation. I h bar d by dt of psi of t, which is u of t psi naught, we differentiate this using the product rule. The term on the right is zero because psi naught is constant in time. We use the result that we derived above, and we get that psi of t, defined in this way, satisfies the Schrodinger equation. Okay, there's a couple of further remarks that we could make about pr uh, particular choices of initial psi naught. Suppose our initial psi naught is an eigenstate with eigenvalue, eigenstate of h with eigenvalue uppercase ei. Let u of t operate on that. And if we expand in the exponential series and let it operate on the eigenstate term by term, you can easily see that what you get is e to the minus i eigenvalue divided by h bar multiplied by the eigenstate. Okay, using this result, we can consider an initial state which is a general vector in the Hilbert space, which is a linear combination of the eigenbasis. We need to assume we have an eigenbasis, but that's always true for self adjoint operators. Okay, take psi of t, represented in this way, act on the sum, this acts on each, each individual term in the sum. And using what we derived above, we see that um, what we get is a sum of eigenstates with the same coefficients, but the time-dependent term. Now, you've actually seen something like this in the last chapter. For example, when we derive the square well, the general solution for the square well was a sum of eigenstates, each one multiplied by the exponential term, that, uh, that gave the time dependence where the eigenvalue for the each eigenstate was in the exponential term with t, i eigenvalue t over h bar. So it would be very insightful, I believe, to go back and look at chapter three, the square well, the representation of the general solution um, in terms of an expansion in eigenstates and um, I think you will get some enlightenment, and it will be helpful. Okay, that's a good place to stop. Next time, we're going to pick up with commutation relations. Bye, everybody.